Coming up this episode, I chat with Milad Davuti and Brent Seavey about Xcare from Accelerate Auto. This is a revolutionary product for only electric vehicles that will save owners potentially thousands of dollars and definitely provide priceless peace of mind. So stick around, you don't want to miss this. Brent and Milad, I want to welcome you both to the EV Resource Podcast. It's a pleasure to have you here, and I'm really excited to talk about extended warranties. And I know that sounds crazy to most people, but uh, (laughs) I promise this will be an awesome conversation. So if you're watching or listening, definitely don't turn it off. Stick around because we've got a lot of really important information to share. Uh, Brent, I'm going to ask you first if you just introduce yourself a little bit further and talk about some of your background and then um, when he's finished, Milad, then the same to you. Sure. Um, yeah, my, my name is Brent Seavey. have been in the automotive space for over 23, 24 years now. Um, joined uh, Tesla at the end of my automotive career with a view towards helping to uh, establish the used car department at Tesla. Um, and that's where Milad and I became acquainted. Uh, we uh, we worked on that department for three years and changed together, helping to launch the uh, the used car department uh, at Tesla. Um, had a terrific time inside, made a lot of great uh, relationships. Uh, really came to understand the company and the in, you know the intricacies of the company and how how uh, Tesla does business. And I think that's that's going to play in uh, a little bit you know later on in our discussion, but. But just having a good solid uh, framework of, of friends and acquaintances within Tesla uh, around the world. And I'll, uh, I'll let Milad take it from here. Yeah, thanks, Brent. Uh, so Milad Davuti, uh, nice to be here. Thank you for doing this. I think this is great. We, um, so for me, I, uh, I started in Tesla. Well, I've been in the EV space, specifically the EV space, for a little over a decade. So a little over 10 years. I started Tesla back in 2011. I was the first employee to be hired in the state of Texas. Um, this is right when the company was establishing their first retail bonds. So uh, first one was in California, second one was in uh, Colorado, third one was in Texas, South Houston. So um, <clears throat> did that. I was a sales manager there for about uh, two, th- about three years and then um, moved up to Chicago to help start what is now the remarketing program, as Brent mentioned, the used vehicle and trade-in uh, program for the company. And I expanded that globally uh, out into our European markets and our Asian markets, uh, even dabbled it with some new market entry. and. Uh, and a lot of other things um, help start kind of the retention loyalty program uh, that Tesla is, that's still around at Tesla today. Uh, and left it in 2018 um, to join up with Accelerate uh, and help to create Xcare, which is kind of the topic of conversation, really, um, to, to solve a problem that was out there, um, to really create a product that benefited the community and doing uh, and create what is, you know, in essence, a warranty, but uh, making it different, um, making it more appealing. Uh, and making it specifically designed for electric vehicles, battery electric vehicles, and EV owners uh, in support of the community rather than um, just kind of creating an insurance product for everything. Sure. One of the things that I really have started to focus on a lot, my attention just seems to be drawn, is to uh, the used EV market. And that is really something that is in its infancy. I mean, there are used EVs out there, you know, some of the older Nissan Leafs or Chevy Bolts, or of course, just about any Tesla. What I never thought about was an extended warranty. You know, the, the advice that I would give to people is, hey, you know, buy a used EV, but don't keep it past its warranty because if the something happens, you're you're just it's too expensive. You're not going to want to deal with it. Uh, give pass it on to somebody else. Go out and buy a, a different one. Uh, but then I had listened to a podcast with somebody else. Actually, Brent, I believe you were on and kind of explaining things, and I was like, oh, wait a minute. There's really something here that makes a lot of sense. And then, Brent, after the conversation you and I had, I think it was last week or or the the week before that, it really made sense why even purchasing, and we'll get to it, but purchasing an extended warranty for your EV before the manufacturer's warranty even expires, why that could be such a great idea, too. So that is something I want to touch on, but we'll save that for a little bit later. But let's just kind of start at the beginning and explain the company, 
and the mission behind the company and why that's so important to you guys to provide this valuable product to the EV world before we'll dive into, you know, kind of the, the, the nitty gritty about the product and what you cover. And then I do want to also touch on what you won't cover as well, because I think that's important for people to know. Accelerate. Yeah. Uh, it has been around uh, since 2014, but our CEO and uh, and founder, uh, KJ uh, Gimbel, actually has been in the leasing space for many, many years. Uh, KJ wrote the first leases on Teslas before Tesla even had their own leasing program. If you recall, in the early days of Tesla, you had to, uh, they had this resale value guarantee because they didn't even have a leasing program. So they had to like guarantee they buy your car back at a certain value. Well, that's basically how a lease is set up. And so KJ early on, in 2012, actually started writing leases for Teslas and doing business financing and continues now today even to be a major partner of Tesla in the business space for business leasing and, and, and personal leasing. And so I interacted an awful lot with KJ. Malad interacted an awful lot with him while we were at the uh, remarketing department at Tesla and, uh, and later on. Um, and so basically, we all became acquainted really well with one another and with the mission that we were all trying to push forward which was to accelerate the adoption of electric vehicle sustainable transport. And so after Malad's time in the remarketing department, he went to then join with KJ Gimbel and develop Xcare. Malad, you. Sure. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a natural progression, right? So during the time, so whenever we were starting up the used vehicle uh, sales program, right? And um, we started remarketing with doing non-Tesla trade-ins because that was the customer that set an assessment. Mm -hmm. right? Someone would come in and say, hey, I need to, I need to trade in this car, sell this vehicle in order to buy this one. And the answer of the company was no, <laughs> we can't, right? So that was wow. the first problem that we had to solve. <laughs> um, the second yeah. problem that we had to solve started out in really deeply in October of 2014, which is a pretty big milestone for Tesla's history because that's when dual motor was released. Now we had a fresh new model. Uh, we had uh, the first generation autopilot hardware. And a lot of people wanted to trade in their vehicle to get the new one, right? Older Model S owners. Now, sure. we, granted, we didn't have you know tens of thousands of them on the road, but we had enough um, to where we needed to formulate something, right? And then that's, to be honest, that was really the first major birth of the used EV world, right? Because that's when we started looking at, all right, well, how do we price them? How do we buy them? How do we remarket them? What do we refurbish? Mm -hmm. How do we create another ancillary product? Right? How, what type of warranty product do we add on to this to resell out to the public, right? Um, and these are all the problems that we had to solve in order to create this entire model. So um, by the time I left, now this is four years after that point, um, and we were selling used cars all over the world, not just in the United States. Um, in fact, some markets like Hong Kong were almost exclusively used car markets because of the taxation was so high for new cars. That um, you know, we uh, when I left, it, it, we kind of saw something very interest, interesting that happened almost overnight, where there is a you know it, go, it went from like a few hundred uh, used EVs in the market to all of a sudden several thousand, and that was kind of concerning. And they started aging, <clears throat> they started aging pretty uh, uh, pretty long. Dealers started buying them because they knew that there was a lot of hype behind them. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people were very interested. You know, this cult like following of Tesla owners and Tesla community that we're all a part of. We definitely understand that. And uh, and people felt very strongly about these products. So dealers, that's when they started dabbling in. It was hard for them to sell the car, right? Um, you know, the whole model of Tesla is educate, 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 right. uh, tell about the historical knowledge, you know, how do you drive these, how do you sell them? It's, it's much different than that of a normal dealer model. So that's when we started thinking, all right, well, we need to create value add products, right? To help them sell the product itself. Um, and we can, in doing so, we can kind of teach them, educate them on how this all works. And that was really the first birth of the idea of creating just a warranty product. And originally for ourselves, um, we were dabbling in a subscription. You know, we needed that. We had some inventory in Tesla inventory. So we were actually going to create a, a warranty for our own cars to sell it out. But then the kind of the thought said to us is why own this ourselves? Why just help ourselves when we can help? the entire used vehicle market. Sure. Um, if, if we can help other people sell the cars, then all of a sudden the inventory that's available for sale becomes significantly less, less vehicles are out in the marketplace, holds stronger values, and now more people would wanna buy the car. And the entire mission here is get more people in the vehicle. No one wants to buy a car that tanks in value for four years. That's not appealing, right? You wanna buy a car because it holds for three or four or five years. Um, and we needed to make sure that that was the case. So that's when we pivoted. 
So we started saying, okay, well, let's probably lighten up the inventory and let's just try to sell these warranties through dealerships, through ourselves, um, and really kind of focus on that same innovative process of building and solving problems. How can we do that with this? Um, and how can we democratize it to where it's not just owned by ourselves, but it's something that we can give out to the entire public. Sure. And my understanding is that you guys can offer something for any vehicle as long as it's a battery electric yes. vehicle. You're not working with plug-in hybrids. If it has a gasoline engine or burns anything, it's not on the list. Is, uh, do I have that right? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Uh, you know, I, it, we, we didn't want to just want to make it for Tesla. We wanted to throw in every battery electric vehicle. Sure. When I would I would imagine that um, not wanting anything to do with a gasoline engine is probably smart for business too, because that's going to have uh, more issues than you know typical battery electric components. And I do want to point out that um, this might be a good time that. As I understand it, you guys do not cover the batteries or the electric motors. Is that right? You know, traditionally we have not, right? We that, that those are covered under a separate eight-year warranty by Tesla, ten-year warranty by some other manufacturers. So those components are generally pretty well covered. Um, but the idea is that at least with Tesla, that those components are designed to last for about fifteen years or a half million mm -hmm. miles. So if you get to the end of your eight-year warranty on your powertrain and you're really not having any significant issues, chances are that a lot of that manufacturer's defect that leads to most failures will have already shaken out. Now, yeah. there are a significant number of people that are still uncomfortable not having the battery and drive motor covered. And we are in the process right now of developing battery and drive motor coverage uh, for uh, right now, it, we're, we're concentrating on newer vehicles, uh, 2017, 2016, and forward. Uh, we're, we're trying to negotiate our way back to covering even as far back as perhaps you know 2015, even 2014. Uh, right now, I think we've got a pretty good handle on, on some of the newer ones, 2017 and forward. But uh, we'd really like to get this out to as many people in the community as possible. Because at the end of the day, it is a very expensive component, right? Um, and, and a lot of people just would sleep a whole lot better at night knowing that they were covered. And so we'll have an ancillary product that you can, that you can buy separately from the X-Care uh, coverage that will then cover the battery and drive motor uh, for, for uh, you know, against failure and against, uh, you know, extreme degradation. That's really nice to hear that it's something that you're working on, not necessarily because that is the primary thing that people need. And so setting that almost to the side now because most people that don't own an ev or even a lot of ev owners uh, myself included at a certain point those are the parts of the car that we focus on the most Absolutely. and so it's good to hear that you're working on that but the point that i think is more important to make than that is with x care all of the things that you do cover that people admittedly don't think about they have no clue how an ev works and most people aren't going to bother to figure it out most people don't bother to figure out how an ice vehicle works they just want it to work and when it breaks they want it to get repaired yeah. so i definitely want to dive into what x care is what is covered and and the reason why that's so important because of all of the other parts that make up a battery electric vehicle that can fail and when they do repairs can get pretty expensive yeah i, I you know i tell people that you know there are so many parts of an ev that you just don't see right uh it, tesla did a very good job of making it look like their cars run on happy thoughts and sunshine right? <laughs> you open up the hood you open up the trunk you open up it, and you don't see anything right it's just this right. beautiful space where you can put your groceries and impress your friends because you can put crap in the front trunk you know hey it's like a porsche but it's an suv yay but the fact of the matter is is there's so much going on underneath those covers right mm -hmm. you've got rectifiers transformers you've got battery thermal management system you've got sensors cameras radars proximity sensors even the headlights on a tesla it, I like to say Tesla built a really great car to build and a bad car to fix. And the reason why I say that is because they built the headlights as one contiguous unit. You can't service the headlight. You can't take the bulb out and replace it. You can't fix the LED. It's all one contiguous sealed unit, right? And they're about 
$1,200 a piece, but with install, a pair of them will set you back about 2,800 bucks. And they usually go in pairs because guess what? They came out of the same box, right? Sure. It, the back seats in a Model X, especially the second row of the electric seats, right? Okay. Those, those are made so that if the motor goes out, if the heating element goes out, that entire seat has to be replaced. one unit. Has to be replaced. Wow. Three grand. Three grand for one seat. I would just live with broken seats. I think I think a lot of people and I think a lot of people now forget that you know that was that's a hundred thousand dollar car, right? Right. Uh, And there's a reason there's a a reason why those are hundred thousand dollar cars. Um, Now there is something to say that uh, although that you know all those things are absolutely truth and factual, there the the there's not a whole lot you can do to prevent certain uh, a lot of those things from going out, right? So the the difference between that and a normal combustion engine is that. You know, you have to take that car into service all the time. Normal combustion engine, that is, take it into service all the time to prevent catastrophic issues right. from happening. Right. Um, so therefore, you have to continuously pump money into this thing. And the, you know, if you want to compare it to other hundred thousand dollar cars, look at a BMW Seven Series. You're going to put a lot of money into that vehicle just to make sure it runs normally. Right. Sure. And that is a very different perspective of this. Right. Same cost of the car, but you're not putting in tons of money to prevent something from happening. Unfortunately. Things do happen, right? And when they do happen, the cost can be higher. But the frequency of going into service is so significantly less than that of its a traditional counterpart. But the cost per repair is higher because you're only bringing it in when something is actually faulty. So we do see average repairs of you know twelve hundred dollars uh, around there, and sometimes outliers are being eight nine thousand dollars, right? Of just like huge, huge things. Like you need to replace the entire roof because your panel roof is just completely gone at that point. Um, it becomes pretty costly. Is that the norm? Not, not necessarily. Is it happening frequently? Absolutely not. Right. But it is, um, it is there. It is still a hundred thousand dollar car. It is a hundred thousand dollar car for a reason. And we shouldn't necessarily forget that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think especially these days with all of the hype that there is around electric vehicles, the people that are buying them, they're and not necessarily the hundred thousand dollar no. versions, mind you. You know, what I mean, I, I, sure. I, I use myself as a really good example of just a normal person that stretched a little bit to buy an EV. You know, the way I bought our Model Three was I compared the cost of maintenance and and repairs and gas and everything on our Volkswagen GTI, and added that up, and it was like seven hundred and fifty dollars a month. And I was like, well, the Model 3 payment will cost a lot less. We don't necessarily have a pile of cash sitting off to the side for a $1,200 repair. We would definitely either have to put that on a credit card or cut back on something else in order to make that happen. And I have a feeling that whether it's an EV6 or the Hyundai Ionic 5 or some of these other newer EVs like the Volkswagen ID4, when those start to go past their warranty periods, there will be a lot of people that buy them for the same reason that I bought my EVs. It will save you money on a monthly basis, but they're not going to be prepared for the higher cost of when something breaks. So I really want to get into why the option that you have especially if it's sold to somebody through a dealership, because maybe it can be lumped into the monthly payment of the vehicle that they buy, uh, why it's so important where it can save somebody the headache of going, okay, I've got to fix my car. It's the only car I have. I use it to get to and from work and wherever else I need. I need it fixed now and I can't afford a $4,000 or $2,000 bill, how does what XCare cover, how does that help people? Well, I'm, I'm glad you touched on that because, um, you know, when Model S and Model X came out, they were 100,000, 100,000 plus, right? So people buying those cars, most of them anyways, could absorb a pretty big bill without mm-hmm. too much sure. uh, discomfort, right? But once Model 3 and Model Y came out, and once we started really significantly selling the used Model S's and, and X's at a more approachable price point, yeah. what you had enter the market was a demographic that are called aspirational buyers. And so once they can get in, they go to the max of their budget and they get in. And the problem with that, as you alluded to, is the fact that if that's the top of your budget, and then you have a $2,000 service bill, well, you're going to plop that onto your 17.99% credit card. Hope to God you pay it off before, you know, before next spring. 
<laughs> you know, and 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 so what X Care does, is it, I like to call it enforced discipline, right? A lot of people say, well, why don't I just put some money aside, and if there's ever an you know an, an issue, I'll just take from that money, right? Because we'll look at our government, right? I, I think I said this in our private call earlier. Our government is made up of people, right? Our government is made up of people, and they set budgets and they set aside money for certain programs. And then what happens? Two, three years into the program, they start to take from that cookie jar, right? They start yep. to raid from that program for another program, and sooner or later, they take all of those allocated funds and somehow make them go somewhere else. And then that program needs to be funded and there's no money. Look at Social Security, great example. Well, our government are just people on a macrocosm, right? So, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm blinking in and out here. So you might put that money aside, but then your friend gets married in Cancun and you have to go there for three days and Cancun is bloody expensive and, and flying there is expensive. And so you, you go into the cookie jar, but you're going to put the money back in the cookie jar, but you don't. And then you go in there and you grab a little more because you need something. And then, and then honestly, the cookie jar is empty. Your good intentions are gone, and you have a big service bill, and you and you and you need the car. You need the car. You need to pay it. And so now, what? So X Care is basically pay for it, get it out of your life, get it out of your out of your. You know, just make it go away. It's like when you go to Vegas, they give you chips. It's not real money anymore. It's chips. Take your money, put it, make it a warranty, and now it's a warranty. It's not the money anymore. It's a warranty mm -hmm. and you leave it there and when you need it it's there you don't have to have any kind of discipline about it it's just there and when something goes sideways you're covered you know it's like health insurance you wouldn't miss a health insurance payment god god forbid you hope to never use it but you wouldn't miss a payment yep. right but if something seriously and goes sideways with you and you end up spending a week in the hospital you should see some of those bills sure yeah. sure so yeah. what I want to do is, Malad, I, I want to kind of turn things over to you and have you explain the product, what it is, how it works. But I don't want to get yet to why you would want to buy it on a car that you just purchased. For sure. example, my Model so 3 that I just bought. You know, I, I, I want to save that and, and kind of put that next, but not not just yet. Got it. No, for sure. So... So the how you know how we first formulated this this product was and and it kind of touches on the reliability of this 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 pot that we were talking that Grant was talking about right is well one we needed to um, we needed to look at one we needed to look at something that was comparable we actually utilized the Tesla's extended service agreement as kind of a benchmark right not uh, not necessarily exactly but just a benchmark of how it's structured it's really the only example of a native electric vehicle warranty out in the market that you could buy after the fact right before then. There wasn't anything else. So um, so we use we've utilized that and we said, okay, well now we got to make sure that we only hone in on components that are EV focused. We don't want to have a bunch of wording and stuff that is not related to electric vehicles. You know, we're not talking about ignitions, we're not talking about exhaust units. Um, that seems unprofessional. That means that we're not building it specifically designated for this product. That doesn't work. Um, we want to make sure to get that out. Uh, step number three is we needed to make sure that this could work for every electric vehicle in the market. Now, it's not very complicated to build a, a warranty product for um, cars that go through traditional service dealerships, right? And dealerships with service. That's pretty easy because that's been around for decades at this point. What was difficult was how do you make it work for something for someone like Tesla that has a direct service model? And not just Tesla, but now we have like Lucid and Rivian and other of these EV startups um, that are coming on board that are going to have similar service structures. So we knew that this was going to occur. So we needed to make sure that we had an operation and a plan uh, to do so. Um, and in order to figure this out, we needed to then look at how the traditional world was making uh, warranty products. And you know, things like sending an expector out was surprisingly a very big issue that we had to combat, right? Now we needed to partner with the right people, right? So we worked with we ended up partnering with one of the largest and most innovative administrators out there, backed by one of the largest insurance banks in the entire country, um, to really jump on the side be on, but behind us on this and really run with us. And one of the big things was, well, we send inspectors out for everybody, right, for every single vehicle before we cover them. And then my first question was, sure, if you're going to send an inspector out to go check out an EV, what are they going to tell you? What are they going to inspect? <laughs> the cosmetic of the car? Do we cover that? 
So then that just made them start thinking everything differently. They're like, wait sure. a second, you're right. Well, then what are we in, uh, inspecting? How do we go about this, right? So then we all of a sudden went all the way back to step zero and said, let's think about how these vehicles are built, the components around them, how they tick, how they function, and let's make sure we build a product that's specifically designated for an electric vehicle. Everything was rewritten. Uh, and I can't stress that enough. Everything was rewritten. So we don't send out inspectors to go cover uh, to go check out your car before you buy it, right? Um, and we do make sure that uh, we do rely on these service centers, like for Tesla as a, as a major example, um, and we trust everything that they're saying, right? We will make sure that they say that what's wrong with the vehicle. Obviously, they get their own parts. We're not buying parts from some right. third party, right? Tesla's a manufacturer; they supply their own their own components, uh, and we make sure we cover the vehicle. And we have now an entire team of claims representatives that are also a lot of them are from the EV world, right? Actually, some of them are former Tesla. And so we all have this training behind us and an understanding of the marketplace and the vehicles themselves. Um, so we can speak upon them very, very uh, intellectually and very technically. Um, but that was a big focus, right? And then number, the last thing was, it's not about how you sell one of these products. It's how you keep your word, right? One of the, one of the reasons why the biggest negative sentiment out there for insurance products or warranty products is that, they don't cover, right? I paid all this money for something and they're not covering any of the damages or there's all these exclusions. There's sure. all this fine, fine, fine print. print. Yep. Exactly. All this fine print that doesn't, that, you know, that, that, that doesn't really make sense or I didn't know what I was buying into, right? We didn't want to be known for that. Therefore, we couldn't build for that, right? We wanted to make sure that, you know, we had our reviews. We want the reviews of people that have been using the warranty, not the one people that are buying the warranty, right? Sure. It's a very different perspective. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's about, it's about the quality of the, uh, of the service itself. And so we do make sure we look at everything, right? Make sure that it's something that's related to what's go going on, make sure it's a failed component, make sure it's, uh, that it's actually covered. And we'll go above and beyond to make sure that everything is covered. We try to pay for as much as we possibly can. We'll make sure that if you need roadside assistance, we try to be the fastest one on the market. We try to be faster than Tesla. Um, and we, we try to, we really go over the top and we make sure we understand the concerns and some of the service issues, especially like experience wise, that we want to make sure that when you're dealing with us and your next care customer, you have a level of concierge service that puts it above and beyond. Right. And that's what we really do in Strive every single day. And we have multiple teams working on this every day. So, and that's what you can expect whenever you actually buy X care is you can actually expect people that put their heart and souls into the why of why we're doing this. Uh, before we're offering what it is. And, and that's incredibly important. Sure. So I actually, with my uh, Chevy Spark EV, had um, my motor controller, my inverter. Um, I forget exactly what it was actually now. Um, now, luckily, it was covered under warrant, the, the regular manufacturer's warranty. Um, but that's something that, let's say it wasn't. I believe it was about a $1,200 repair bill. With X Care, if I notice that something breaks, or I didn't even know what it was, I just my car wouldn't drive. It would turn on. I'd put it into drive. It would not move. So I had it towed to the dealership. Well, I'm not a huge fan of dealerships. Some are better than others. Uh, some are better for EVs than others. Um, I think that's going to be changing, but I won't get into that. That's a that's a whole other conversation. Um, but I would prefer to take my car to an independent shop that I know and I like and I trust the people. Maybe it's a family business. I want to take it to them. So hypothetically, let's say my car wouldn't have been covered under warranty and therefore I would not have taken it to the dealership. I would have taken it to an independent shop. The independent shop would then diagnose the vehicle, figure out what's wrong, and they would tell me if I had X care, what would be the next step? How does that work to then get the vehicle repaired, get it paid for, and that I can drive my car away fixed and be at ideally nothing out of pocket? I don't know if that's exactly how it works or if there's co-pays or whatever, but then as little money out of pocket and get my car back as quickly as possible. What kind of time frame does the process with Xcare typically take? Uh, in terms of communicating with you guys what's wrong, and then, of course, getting the shop, wherever it is, paid. Sure. So we actually ask that uh, whenever something happens, in the event that something does occur, 
call our claims number first. Now there's a couple of different ways to do this, right? If you're a Tesla owner, you're following one process. If you're uh, every other battery electric vehicle out there, you're following another. But no matter what, you, know, you call us before you, uh, <clears throat> before you take your vehicle into service, at least okay. so we can hear your concerns. You can tell us what's going on. Uh, once again, we have trained professionals. Uh, so that's, that's when we kind of start your claim and everything else as far as kind of scheduling with your service center, um, making sure you, you know, the, all of that, nothing changes there, right? So as far as the time of how long you can get your vehicle in for service, that's not having anything to do with us. That's purely based on the service center that you're going to, right? If they have a wait, we can't control that. Right. That's up to them, right? Um, but you guys no aren't going to slow down the process no, by a couple of days of trying not. to, you know, that's what I was getting no. at with so that yeah, question. The moment, the moment that they diagnose the vehicle, um, you know, Tesla sends the customer the, the estimate or the repair order. They even sometimes do it before you even bring your car in for service, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, other service centers would have to wait, right? In a traditional, kind of a traditional service center. They would have to inspect your car and make sure that you kind of diagnose it. And then they'll, they'll send over the estimate. Usually our claims team turns that around within a single day, right? Usually within just a few couple hours. Um, we just look it over. If we had any questions, we'll ask the service center. If not, then we just kind of approve it and then you're good to go, right? And then once the customer, once the uh, once the vehicle is complete with its service work, um, that's when we've already been in contact at that point. We just send the service advisor and uh, literally an email with the credit with a unique credit card information spe specifically for that amount. They charge it and then yeah, sometimes, actually, a lot of times it happens before you, you're even present at the service center to go pick up your car. So it doesn't actually delay anything, right? In fact, it might awesome. actually speed this up. In fact, to Tesla service centers, especially out there in the country, a lot of them refer customers over to us because of how easy it is, right? Hmm. They can actually get the car in and out faster and paid for faster because someone else is doing it before the customer is even present. Sure. That is definitely any anytime you hear about a new product and for a lot of people watching or listening to this they probably never heard of x care or even thought about an extended warranty for their ev you start to have those questions going okay well how does this actually work is this going to be a big hassle if i something does break um i am a great example i assumed that the the point of contact for you guys would be after the vehicle was diagnosed and i love to hear that it's really you're the first call to make and then you can help walk the the customer through the process of maybe they don't have an ev repair center that because it's never broken before so maybe they don't even know where a good place to go is i'm sure you guys have uh all around the country different independent repair shops that you've done work with that you could then refer them to if they needed uh, someone that was close to them. So that's really great to hear that. Uh, but then on the flip side of that, um, you know, at the end of the process, just making the payment simple so that the person who their car is broken, you know, or getting repaired, that is enough of a headache for somebody to worry about than to worry about paying for it. Um, yeah. The one thing you didn't answer, which uh, I do want to ask is, is there any kind of copay or anything that somebody has to come out of pocket when there is an issue like um, a many traditional insurance yes. products would have? Um, or is it something that you pay at the beginning and it, you're covered? So with Xcare, there's a hundred dollar deductible per visit. So okay. what a lot of owners do, they generally uh, kind of wait until they have like four or five things uh, just schedule service, especially if they're not detrimental, right? Sure. You can still live with it. It's not something that's like uh, holding back your ability to drive the car or get you point A to point B. So you kind of kind of pull it pull all together just for convenience sake. Okay. Uh, I know I do that with my own personal Tesla. So <laughs> but, right. uh, like but those anyway. Model X seats, right? I mean, that's yeah. like, all right, I'll, I'll wait on that until something else happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when you bring it in, uh, there's a hundred dollar, a uh, hundred dollar per visit. So we pay, we cover the build of all everything, everything that's covered, and then you just pay a hundred dollars. And and honestly, I think that's something that most people could handle. Um, you know, so that that's that's great. I mean, shoot, I don't I don't have any other reaction to that because that's that's fantastic. <laughs> just like, hey, if something breaks, all you got to worry about is a hundred dollars. And I think, I mean, I used to work in the insurance industry. I sold auto home life. I mean. I could talk about insurance and why it's so important. This is ultimately just talking about one thing, and that is for an owner of an EV, it's peace of mind. Absolutely. That is it. If something breaks, we got you covered. All you have to take care of is 100 bucks, and boom, you're good. No problem. Uh, that is so much 
more valuable than most people realize is having that peace of mind so you don't have to worry about it. And honestly, most people don't worry about it until something happens. They don't think about it. And then something happens and they panic. Um, the things that you guys are helping with aside from the car, and I want to point this out to people, is that conversation with your spouse when the car breaks the stress that that can cause on a relationship, especially if you're not prepared for it and you can't repair the car, then that is something that gets drawn out maybe months because maybe now you have to share one car while you save up to fix the second one that broke. You guys are solving that problem along with fixing the car. And I think that's something that people wouldn't think about. They don't look that deeply into what a problem with transportation can cause. I mean, you could even take it further. My car's broken. I can't get to work. I can't afford to fix my car. I lose my job. You guys are fixing that problem. Yes. You know, so that's something that the we value. Take, we, even, we even take it one step further, just to interrupt oh. really quickly. We even have something called trip interruption. So in the worst case situation, if you're over hundred miles away from home, right? You're sure. actually taking a road trip. Then there's a breakdown that occurs. Not only will we help you get your car to the service center and help you repair it and cover it all, but we'll also even help you pay for lodging and meals. Right? Uh, That's part of X care. It gets better. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. I mean, I, I, I'm not trying to be a salesperson, but my God, anybody that's listening to this that has an EV, if they aren't, <laughs> if they aren't actually seriously considering the purchase of X care at this point, um, then I, I don't even know what, what would be wrong with them. Um, I mean, I'm sold uh, big time. So then the question is, let's say somebody, everything that they heard, they're like, oh, that makes so much sense. I never thought about it. It's wonderful. Now I need to go and get this protection. Let's talk about what that process looks like. What does somebody need to do in order to find out one, how much it costs for their vehicle? Um, and, and, and kind of walk, walk us through that process as well. So, yeah, it, it, it's pretty simple, actually. We just kind of, kind of figure out how much you're driving per year, and that's pretty easy to figure out. If you've had your Tesla for two years and you put on 26,000 miles, you're driving 12, 13,000 miles a year. And then we just try and match you to whatever your plans are for the car. So if you're going to have it for another two years, another three years, another four years, we kind of try and kind of work that out figure out what that cost would be to cover the car for your anticipated use of it. And, and then basically uh, we come up with a price. We're a one price retailer. Uh, we, we want everybody to know that they always got our first and best. We don't want anybody going up on a blog and finding out that somebody paid 500 bucks less than them because they were a great negotiator and they worked there. You know, we don't start you at $7,000 and come down to 2,700 or whatever, you know, it, it's not that kind of atmosphere. It's, it's not this wild west kind of used car show. What it is, is basically a great product that we run on tight margins to protect our community. And then we, we put the contract together. We send out a DocuSign for e-signature of the contract. And we send out a square invoice uh, where you can play, pay right from your bank account if you want to do an ACH transfer in from your bank account. Or you can use a credit card without a service fee. Some people love that. And they're like, oh, you take credit cards without a fee? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I'll get tons of you know credit. I'll get tons of cash back sure. or you know, miles towards my, <laughs> I'm like, knock yourself off. You know? but what, it's kind of a backdoor way of getting into account without really a discount because a lot of people get cash mm -hmm. back on their cards. So it, it works out rather well. And then what another thing to consider as well is when you're considering how much X care membership to purchase, you can transfer your unused warranty for only 50 bucks to a private buyer. So you're buying a five-year-old Tesla right now and you want to keep it for five years. Well, when you sell that car, it's going to be a 10-year-old Tesla, right? Mm -hmm. So you're already selling to people that are a little bit nervous about, you know, putting money into something that's that old. Well, if you're going to keep it for five years, if you can, if the stair step isn't that big, buy a six-year warranty, have a year's worth of warranty on the end that you can sell to your private buyer, make your car super attractive on the used car market, X care benefits because we get a built-in member that after that year is up, we can then reach back out to them and be like, hey, your X care is coming up. Would you like to, you know, would you like to extend? Would you like to get another coverage? Is that the so we've been trying to reach you about your car's extended <laughs> warranty call? 
yeah, we do exactly. not do that. <laughs> we, we call those people just a uh, just a prank call. We actually get those calls on our corporate line. Oh, We've been dude. trying to reach that warranty. Really? It's like Honestly, oh, that's you know, hilarious. <laughs> Sorry, I derailed you there, but I. <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah, so it, 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 it's, it's a great way to have peace of mind, but it's also a great way to kind of, I, I call it front loading a selling feature. So that later on, when it's time to take a different direction, you can sell the car with a little warranty on it. Uh, we've had a couple of customers, uh, a lot actually helped this guy with his first one. He's he's since been a member three times. Uh, he he buys his cars, buys an extra warranty, and then he'll sell his car and he'll sell his extra warranty with the car and get another car. And and he's actually made money on a couple of times because the retail value of his warranty oh, sure. moving forward with the car was more than the prorated refund he had coming back. And so he just sold the warranty forward with the cars, went to the website and said, yeah, look, a four year 50K on this car with X care is 3,200. I'll give it to you for three grand. Okay, deal. You know, nice. Get a great deal. His pro rate of refund coming back was twenty six hundred dollars. He made four hundred bucks. You know, so it worked out. Works out rather well. This is something that you kind of casually just mentioned there, but if somebody sells their vehicle before the end of the warranty period that you, they purchased, you guys are giving them money back. We can, right? So there's two options, right? Every customer has the ability to either cancel and get a pro rate or refund. It's whatever you just didn't use, either time or miles involved, or whatever non-paid cancellation, or I'm sorry, non-paid claims that uh, that might have uh, that you haven't necessarily used. And then, uh, or you can transfer it, right? And we always give, you always, we always tell customers, you know, before you sell your, your car, if, assuming you sell a private party, if you sell it to a dealer, you have, you know, they, they, you can't transfer over to a dealer. So you just, sure. you only have one avenue. But if you sell it private party, Come and get a cancellation quote from us, just so you understand like what would be how much you're going to get back. But there's a good chance you might get more for the car than that when you sell it, and then just transfer it over. And that's good for everybody, right? It gives the new person a peace of mind. It, if they're a first EV owner, come buying a private party mm -hmm. from you. It gets a much better experience behind the vehicle. There's a lot less things and lots less issues that can probably occur. Uh, to make them have some sort of negative sentiment towards electric vehicles. And that's our, that's what that drives us, right? That's our mission yeah. is we just need to get more people in these cars to keep them in it and just create that value added product, that peace of mind and just make it better, make, make it better for all. That it. All right. So I got to ask, cause it almost sounds too good to be true, right? Like I, I got a smile on my face cause I'm just loving everything that you guys are saying. What's is there one? Is there a downside? And is there a reason that anybody would not want to have that protection for an EV? Yes, absolutely. We'll say, for instance, that you are leasing your Model 3 for three years. You're leasing your Model 3 for three years. You're going to be okay. under factory warranty the entire time. It's, it's a waste of your money. Uh, you know, you might get trip interruption or towing or whatever that's concurrent with your factory warranty. But other than that, it's, it's another waste of money. Um, or, or somebody that, uh, you know, is, is, I don't know. No, not really. <laughs> well, we definitely don't want to sell a warranty to somebody for a term. We know they're going to be under factory warranty entirely. Yeah. Right. Cause that just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, we don't right. want to profit or off of anybody like that. Like that's not good business. No. Um, so in those circumstances, absolutely. It doesn't make sense. Okay. We don't want to do that. <laughs> Now, you know, you know I do want to touch on that if somebody is under warranty, like let's say they just bought their EV and there's a factory warranty for three years, 36,000 miles or whatever, there is still a reason why they yes. would want to buy X-Care protection in the beginning while they still have that factory warranty. Let's touch on that because that I think is uh, a significant point to make. Couple reasons. Um, there's a couple of reasons. And this is actually what I do for my own personal vehicles, right? Uh, I, whenever I take delivery of a new EV and I daily drive only EVs, I can't go back anymore. Um, and, uh, I, I always get either an eight or 10 year option. And the reason being is because you save significant amounts of money. So if you were to, um, let's, let's take a new model three as an example comes with a factory four year and 50,000 mile bumper to bumper uh, limited warranty. So normally what we would offer is buy an eight or 10 year, right when you take delivery, that way it gives you at least four year 50 after the fact or six years after that fact, right? Um, in addition, and the reason why it makes sense is because our pricing is based on a matrix. We're very transparent. 
about how all this works. We even have a tool online where you can actually go purchase, but you can also play around with it and look at the cost differences uh, between different model years. So it's based on the older the car by model year, the higher the mileage, the higher the cost. So it's cheaper to buy an eight year, 100,000 mile warranty the moment after you take delivery versus waiting until your car is four years of age or 50,000 miles and then buying a four year 50 at that moment of time. You get the same amount of coverage at the end of the day, but you're costing hundreds of hundreds of dollars more. So if you wait, you want to, you de- if you wait, yes, you want to do it, make sure you do it as soon as possible because that's how the pricing structure works. We tell everyone that this is not a hidden, there's no hidden secret here. We advise people to do that because it is cheaper for them. There's also another added benefit. Literally, I just got off the phone with the customer, not even three days ago. This happened over the weekend. He was definitely upset because his car broke down, right? His vehicle stopped working. So he was stranded on the side of the road. And I've had this now a handful of times. Even if you know, he was under warranty, right? He wasn't outside of warranty. So he still had Tesla roadside. You know, and just like just about everybody, they're brokers, right? They try to get someone nearby, especially if you're in the middle of nowhere, you're not near sure. a Tesla service center to get someone to come pick you up. So oftentimes there could be a chance, and I'm not going to sit here and say Tesla roadside is bad or something like that because they're not, but there could be a chance, you know, depending on where you are, that there's no availability, that they can't find availability, but it gives you another option because roadside still works, right? You still have Xcare, even if you're not, you know, the component, you know, still under warranty. Why pay a deductible when you don't have to? It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Sure. <laughs> you know, just get it, get it covered. But roadside is always there. So just in case you have two now options and you can possibly get roadside faster than what Tesla's roadside is able to get to you. And that just helps you out. And it's not something you got to pay for. It's it's included. And we've, we've had a handful of situations like that for customers that were under factory warranty where our roadside, which we're able to get there faster. Sure. I actually... Uh... I had a rented Ontario Model S that I took from Virginia to Florida, and I got a unrepairable flat tire in Florida. It took two and a half years, not years. Oh my goodness, two and a half hours. <laughs> Big difference there. Uh, no, two and a half hours before Tesla uh, sent mobile service out to inspect the tire. They put a new tire and wheel on there sent the original tire uh, to the local service center where they would repair it and then send it all the way back up to Virginia for the original owner to arrange to have the car put back together. Um, So, I mean, it was just a weird situation, but it's like before I even owned a Tesla, I had experience with Tesla roadside assistance a thousand miles away from home. So I'm just imagining that, okay, let's say somebody's renting their car out on Turo and they've got X care for the car that is peace of mind, not only for them, but then the person that's renting the car, if they're having trouble a thousand miles away, uh, potentially that could be a a benefit for them as well. Actually, Xcare does not cover ride share. Ah, well then never mind. (laughs) Well, we do cover ride ride share, not rentals, right? So if you trail your car out, but if you want to use it for Lyft or Uber, absolutely. Okay. So yes, yes. Yeah, gotcha. One of the nice things about Lyft and Uber, and I'd like to piggyback on that real quick. If you buy your your Tesla Model 3 brand new, and you know you're going to plow 30,000 miles a year onto this thing, right? Because you're driving for Uber and Lyft. Well, if you put on a, a, a you know, whatever, five-year, 175,000-mile policy right from Jump Street, it'll actually save you almost $1,800 off buying that same coverage at 50K. Wow. You buy you buy 125,000 miles at 50K, and it's going to cost you fourteen, fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars more, depending on if it's X or three or whatever, at at fifty thousand miles. It's insane. That's you can spend. You can save just by purchasing early. Let me ask another question: um, If somebody wants to purchase X Care at the time of purchase. Can it be added into the price of the vehicle and the total amount that is financed? Is that something that you guys work with dealerships to to kind of mold and create a package that can work that way? We do have, yeah, we do have dealerships that uh, that sell X Care, and we do try to focus with the certain dealers that are very EV centric or really trying to establish EV sales programs. Right, we want to we want to partner with people that are that are very like minded like us. Um, you know, the, you know, we, we recently partnered with car lots, uh, it's a big, large dealer. Mm-hmm. That's all around the country. Yep, um, we've got they, one local. Uh, they, yep. They sell, uh, they sell X care current automotive is probably one of the best examples out there. 
Um, they specifically focus on plug-in hybrids yeah. and EVs. These are also old they're Tesla colleagues Chicago, of ours. They're in Chicago, right? Yeah, that area? yeah they're in yep. the Chicago land area. Um, so yeah, in Naperville, yeah. Okay. So they, they sell X-Care. So when you buy it from a dealer that is a retailer of X-Care, they, yes, absolutely, you can roll that all in one. We've had a couple, you know, if you buy it from us directly, uh, we've had a couple situations um, that where uh, the, the owner who's purchasing a car worked with their bank to add it on top, right? Okay. So they funded both of them together. Sure. That's a creative solution to kind of go around that. If you're, if you're on a budget, you need to make sure it's part of your monthly payment. Just think about that in the hindsight. Hell, you can call us and then we can try to at least guide you through it. Can't guarantee anything. It's your bank. You know, I don't, we don't know who what your sure. bank's limitations are or anything of that nature. But we have had a few customers that gone that route um, and, and got their bank to fund it as part of their full financing. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I, uh, I would hope and something that I would actually, um, if it's possible, encourage you guys to look into is almost being able to add dealerships that would want to sell X care on the fly, you know, as somebody that would approach a dealership um, that has a car that I want to buy that car. I want to have X care rolled into it. I can't afford to have X care if it's not rolled into the payment and almost have a way that a dealership can say, Hey, I want to sell this product for this car. Let's do it. Um, I don't, I don't know if that's something that you guys would entertain, but that's certainly something I would, I would push and say, Hey, as the, especially the used EV market goes out there and used EVs end up at the corner lot. I don't know. I want X care on all, all EVs at this point. So yeah, we, we, <laughs> and we have, we have, we have entertained that. We have actually done that probably a handful of times at this point. The customer was already knowledgeable. They did their research. They understood what X care mm -hmm. was. They wanted to make sure X care was part of their vehicle. Um, yes. and they needed it financed. So they needed to buy it with the car and they introduced us to the dealer. And then we worked with the dealer. It is really important to us that the experience is always key, right? Our experience is number one. We want to make sure that no one's accidentally giving incorrect information. So we focused mm -hmm. really heavy on, on training these dealers and making sure they have the correct information. We don't want to make over promises or, you know, sell too much where it's overselling something that maybe that's not us. You know, we want to make sure that sure. we are as transparent as possible. So there's a fine line there, but absolutely. If you've already done your research and, and you already know you want X care and you, you're buying right. from a dealer that you know that doesn't have it, um, we absolutely can entertain the fact that, you know, just put us, uh, make us a connection and yep. then we can at least go out of our way to do something like that if necessary. Sure. Or, um, you know, we can always put you in touch with one of the, one of the dealers that already has tons of inventory of Tesla's. Maybe you find a better deal. Who right. Knows? Right. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, happy to help there too. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that is, I think, um, kind of coming to the end, not only of our time, but also of any questions that I have, um, you guys have answered every question that I had, even after already talking to you, Brent, uh, you know, certainly in conversation, things come up. Uh, what is the best way for people to um, really explore X care, see if it's something that's right for them and, and make contact with you guys? How would somebody be able to reach out and, and really learn more and, and make that next step? So uh, accelerateauto.com um, and backslash X, uh, X dash care. That's our page. If you go on accelerateauto.com, you can just select the Xcare uh, tab at the top. That okay. takes you to our uh, the landing page for Xcare. You can also see all the different other options and verticals that we have at Accelerate. Uh, if you're looking at financing or if you're a business owner, you're looking at uh, getting a fleet for your electric vehicle, we kind of do it all. So, um, but it's oh, it Accelerate though. Oh, the, yeah. Accelerate is spelled X-C-E-L-E-R-A-T-E. -E. Um, I've got it up on the screen number. for the, the YouTube video. Um, oh, it, it will be there. So yeah, perfect. Uh, but obviously have... the audio podcast, people yeah. will have to <laughs> click on the link in the show notes. It'll be there. Don't worry. I'll make sure that, uh, it's easy to find. We do, we do have a tool online for anyone that's not in California, pretty much anyone that's not in California. You can actually just go in and plug in your options and you can see how much a couple, a few different variations of terms, how much it is. You can even purchase directly online, or you can do a custom quote. There's a big kind of red button that's right next to it. Um, fill out your information. You tell us how many miles you drive per year, uh, and then we can really tailor some terms that are specifically towards your driving habits and what we would think would be best uh, for how you drive your car. That's great. That's great. Brent, do you want to have anything to add to close this out? You know what? I, I'm just, I'm really grateful that you've had us on tonight. It's always good to reach out to our community. I guess at the end of the day, what I tell people is 
we cover the EV community because it's our community. These are our yes. people. These are our family. We all drive EVs. We I, we all drive Teslas, actually. But um, yeah, and, and we've all been a part of this space for so long. And and honestly, what used to just break my heart is people would call in and they say, I'm buying my mom's Tesla. Can I come in and buy a warranty from you guys? And when I worked at Tesla, I had to tell them no. I had to tell them no. And then and then they say, well, where can I buy a warranty? And I say, well, really nobody touches Teslas. And, and it was just so sad because I, I'd hear like the disappointment. On the, I mean, you could feel it right through the phone line, right? Oh, sure. well, what am I supposed to do? Well, I don't know. Just whatever, roll the dice. Well, now you don't have to roll the dice. Yeah. You can. And here's another neat thing. Now that the Tesla used car warranty is only one year and 10,000 miles, there really is no upside to buying a used Tesla from Tesla anymore. They're not bad cars. Don't get me wrong. They're great cars, and they've got decent inventory. And if you want to buy from Tesla, that's awesome. And it's a great warranty. I'm not slagging down Tesla at all. I love the company dearly. I have a pile of their stock, and I will for a long time. But at the, end of the, at the end of the day, though, if you're looking in the private market, now you can look. Now you can say, hey, this private seller on, on, on Tesla Motors Club Forum is selling one. I want to buy that car. Or here's one that's on Carvana. I can buy that car, and I can put sure. extra on it. So the idea is now your options have just become basically limitless. And that's really the genius of, of what Milad and KJ designed and, and, and what I have uh, the, the absolute pleasure and honor to represent. So thank you for having us on. It's been an awesome experience. Um, anyone out there, just uh, let us know. AccelerateAuto.com forward slash X dash care. And we will take awesome care of you and get you out some great options. Well, thank you both for your time. And and I it's been an absolute pleasure talking with you. Um, if we had more time, I'd cert I think we could probably go longer just chatting about EVs and uh uh in enjoying uh the topic, you know, of conversation of being able to help people. Um that's something that's near and dear to my heart. I I everything that I do, I want to give people values to to improve the quality of their life. And and in certainly in this case, if they've got an EV or thinking about buying an EV. Uh, I can't think of a better way to give somebody peace of mind after the factory warranty ends. So it's it's an absolute pleasure to share with everybody about this. Um, I think it's that important. And and certainly uh, I would love to have you guys on in the future sometime, you know, when it's appropriate. If something changes with the product or something um, that you think is important that, that we get out there, uh, I'd be more than happy to uh, have you back on and, and we can talk about that too. Well, we got some huge things happening in about three months. Um, some very, very large things that might change the course of how we look how transportation is at on our society level so uh cool that might well that's be exciting <laughs> man way to end it on a cliffhanger right <laughs> stay tuned yeah <laughs> awesome well, thank you so much guys i hope you have a wonderful evening and uh until next time until next time thanks zach thank you awesome all right, so that's it for this episode. I want to thank you so much for watching and listening. Share the EV Resource Podcast with your friends. If you haven't already on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the EV Resource channel. Click like on the video. It doesn't cost you a thing, and it helps us out tremendously. Don't forget to hit the bell icon for notifications because, of course, in the future, you want to be notified of all of the videos that we put out there. And if you're interested in listening to the audio-only podcast while you're in the car or at work or on a jog. You can find those on all of the major podcast platforms as well as on our webpage under the podcast section. I want to thank Rajiv Narayan and Charles Hall on Patreon for their support. Rajiv leads the pack at the executive producer level, which is just $10 a month. As a result, he gets his name read out every week in the podcast. And Charles at the producer level, of course, is once a month for $5. And they also receive ad free episodes of the EV Resource Podcast. So if you're interested in joining them, if you feel like I've earned your support here with the EV Resource Podcast, go on over to patreon.com com slash ev resource patreon is spelled p-a-t-r-e-o-n i invite your feedback always via email to hello at ev-resource.com seriously anything you want to send me even if you want to just say hi i read all my emails it'll be there and otherwise that is it for this episode so thank you so much and i'll catch you next time